Welcome to Draw Process. I'm Ike, page 53 of First Sun and Sword today. That's my self-published sword and sorcery comic, so I'll draw that page. You'll see the finished page at the end of the video, and I'll share my thoughts. Okay, page 53. Sword disappears into the jaws of King Croc, who is slowly pushing toward the pool of water to the right of the throne room. And Sun is watching with disbelief at first thinking sword may be dead or defeated here we see that sword is in the jaws now we know that the jaw muscles have been severed so there's no bite power in the jaws uh, but the reader won't know that yet until the next page so he can't get away because um, he's in the jaws and he's slowly pushed towards the pool of water and he says something like, there it is, lizard, there's the truth, you're dying, dead at the hands of a man. Ha ha ha. So, um, some line sword delivers at the end of the page. So this is a tricky page, because I need to capture that sword has swung his sword down. Like, because on the last page, King Croc was lunging, jaws wide open before sword, who had his sword up in the air. He needs to swing down, but we need to not be able to see exactly how the hit lands on Croc. And, and it needs to look like King Croc has chomped down on sword and, and won that in exchange. Um, and then we need to be able to get the sense that King Croc is, is walking, dragging sword in his jaws towards the pool of water and we need to see that sun is looking at this kind of devastated in shock because it looks like sword has lost um yeah and then sword kind of delivering a line from within the jaws and then we have to show sword in the jaws but not reveal yet that the bottom jaw is severed that there's no bite power on him so these are really tricky things to capture uh, what I started with was kind of like a POV shot for a sun. And I just thought, well, let's just draw this whole thing. But from this angle, we can't see the bottom jaw uh, or the jaw of, of, of Croc. Um, so you won't be able to see what's happened. This is the first image that came to mind. But it uses up a lot of real estate. To It doesn't feel like the right payoff after um, after seeing the last panel on, on page 52 um but but it functions so i planned it out drew it out and working out these thumbnails like i always am trying to trying to work through so kind of seeing that croc is has he's on his feet he's he's not you know dead he's on his on his feet and we see the water we see the the whole of the tunnel in the shot on the left the water and then Croc and his foot. And the, the sword is, is trapped in there. So that that captures the necessary info in that shot. Now, um, I could use two panels to show, you know, focus on King Croc's foot. Show him dragging, you know, walking, crawling towards the, towards the pool. Um, I, there's not a lot of real estate on this page, so I chose not to do that. I thought uh, I could show Sun's surprise reaction because this is the moment when the reader and Sun see this doesn't look good. Um, so his shock. I liked the thought of him being in the middle of the page, kind of like enclosed on either side by images of the crocodile. On, on the meta level, on the full page level, he's, he's in the middle of the page surrounded by the things that are happening and closed by it. So that's a nice, that's a nice choice. I, I threw that in and now uh, another shot. So what are we going to show that King Croc is alive? His gleaming eye that was in the script originally. Um, that's what I was thinking I might show next. And I wasn't sure what would go in the last panel, but I go back to the first panel to capture a better dynamic shot. So, uh, this is kind of the reverse shot, the opposite angle of what was on page 52, what I'm trying to capture here. I'm trying to get the shape of King Croc, but 
like the camera's right behind him and he's just lunging straight down down the line, straight down the, to the vanishing point. Now at that angle, if it's going to be really hard to draw and capture the shapes of King Croc, especially because I use simple shapes in my drawings. It's going to be hard to, I need to show his snout. Can I capture his eyes? Because at this angle, you might not be able to see his eyes or anything. So I want to capture some of his shape, of King Croc's shape, um, but still get this angle where um, the camera's behind him and uh, making it hard to see sword. And we just need to see a few elements like, okay, his head is coming out the top. We see uh, this blood squirting out. Is it is it his blood or is it King Croc's? This is unclear. So this captures um, the action, you know, the sword having just swung down. The sword's in the shot. A sword, the person he's he's uh, he he's maybe leaning back or looking looking like he could be in pain. So that helps us not be able to tell the result of their exchange, but still try to give that payoff from the last page, the payoff of the exchange. So that is challenging. That is difficult storytelling because we need to show the reader, but not show them uh, too much. So a challenging uh, way that I wanted to write the story and, and execute the story in this, in this script, in this page. Okay, the same panel is on the other page. Uh, I, I liked that one, but I've, I've made it longer so that we separate the, the pool of water, the, the tunnel, the hole for the tunnel above. That is not intersecting with sword at all. Um, it kind of spreads out these the important info, which is, there's a few pieces of info to see in this shot that are all important in the background and the foreground. And then we have... Um, King Croc, sword in his jaw, looking tense, uh, and then uh, just that headshot of sun. So at this point, I stopped working on the thumbnails, but I knew that I wasn't happy with, with what I'd come up with. I wasn't totally content yet. Uh, so I needed to figure something out on the page. And that's what uh, I'll do. You'll see uh, in, in the next part. So there it is, the thumbnails onto the penciling and the laying out the panels for the page. Um, I'm going to pencil only for the panel borders. Uh, a lot of times I will go straight to ink for the border, um, but this time I wasn't positive of my plan for the layout. So I, uh, because we're, we're kind of changing the thumbnail here, Okay, so I have been stressed out for several weeks and have not been my regular self. Um, there's a lot of questions and problems I'm trying to solve, things I'm trying to figure out for myself and for Clever Kaiju, for First Sun and Sword as I'm approaching the end of this book and how to move forward with it you know, publishing, printing, kickstarting, all those, all those questions. And I know that that's part of the stress that I'm under. Um, and those questions have been eating up my mental energy and capacity. And so when it's time to do this, these voiceovers, these recordings I do, um, which I do every week here, and they're about 30 minutes each time, and I don't really have a script for these. I just ad lib through it. But when I approach this now, uh, I find myself like unsure what to talk about. Um, there's an awkwardness that comes over me because so much that I've been thinking about is like in the dark. I mean, it's I'm trying to find my way through the dark and just kind of like on the hamster wheel caught and up in it. But also there's things I don't want to say publicly um, about when it comes to publishing and things like that. I want to figure it out first and then present those plans. So um, I think this is, you know, I'm talking about this because I share my experience on this channel, but 
I think other people can relate. This, this is part of being the practice of your art. If your art is like comic books, you know, storytelling, you, you not only get up every day and try to make time and focus and learning and do and making your book, but at the end of the day, there is a book, there is a, a story, there's something to share, um, to get in people's hands, to print whatever, whatever it is you're going to do with it. There's, there's the thing that you've made. And that can ruin the fun. It can be, it, it can be great. It can be helpful also to think of, uh, the product to think of the book you want to get it in their hand in, in readers' hands. You want to you want to make the next book. You have uh, it can it can lead to success. It can lead to money, uh, and it can lead to discipline to produce the books, and not just thinking in terms of you know the page, the panel, and working on that, but the book and the business. Right? Uh, there's a lot of possible good to come from it, but it's a stressful thing. And I'm, you know, telling myself here that I need to not let myself get weighed down by this. And that there is some work to be done, some good to come from engaging with these problems. But I have to remember, I am an artist. I'm not supposed to be consumed by these things. I can't sacrifice myself and my art and my freedom and passion on that altar. So at the end of the day, I have to disconnect from those questions to a degree and to each their own degree. But for me, there's, there's, there's a degree to which I've got to, uh, I can't, I can't, uh, engage with it. Um, if I maintain my practice of telling stories, producing work, making it available in some way, shape or form, Keep connected with other artists, keep in community, keep sharing my work through YouTube and other means, and sharing what I do, more and more so. Uh, not not in, in a business sense, but just out of, out of a sense of passion, uh, and to do it. If I do this, uh, then I'm going to win, like, I'm, then I'm doing the right thing, I'm moving in the right direction. Um... I've got to, yeah, the, the, the productivity and the passion staying high is more important than a lot of these business questions for me. And that's hard to do when other people are counting on you too. Because I'm thinking about the Clever Kaiju community as well. And not only myself, when I think about these publishing questions. Um, which, you know, that can, yeah, that can add another level of burden or sense that you, that you really need to engage with these problems and resolve them. You can't just let them go. Um, so yeah, I'm talking about this, this, uh, could be helpful to other artists. Um, can you, um, Can you engage in difficult, challenging things and not be completely hardened by it? Um, do you, can you even say no? Can you disengage from, from difficult and hard things and also face them when you need to without losing yourself in them? Um, can you be like a, the warrior that knows how to dance? knows how to have joy 
and is not just a soldier, not just a machine. Um, because when you feel weighed down, you feel like you got to become a machine. Um, So that's one, that's one thing. And just as I said that, I was thinking, maybe that doesn't capture the, the whole uh, strange, this strangeness that I feel, because the other part is I, it's not that I need to become a machine to increase my output, uh, to produce my book faster or, or something. It's, um, it's that I know what is called for right now is a visionary. Not only for my work, but for Clever Kaiju. Um, but, but we could just say for my work, you know, I need the power of, of a visionary. Someone who can see a future, uh, a possible outcome, a possible way of doing things, uh, a creative way that people haven't thought of that can navigate towards towards that desired goal and it can be anything anything we can dream up you know it can be anything anything i could envision so i'm well aware that like what's called for is not like just a factory line worker i need i need visionary energy leader energy and that is that's tough because I'm limited, like I'm human, and I'm I'm faced with that, with my limitation, and I know that I can't just buckle down and get hard. I've got to stay loose. I got to stay creative and passionate. But, but I also I'm so aware of my inadequacy. To to be that way, I can't just you know generate that. I can't just be a visionary for, uh, just because I want to, and there's no clear path to get there. So. For me, um, I'm feeling that I just need to maintain my hope um, that, you know, that's a sort of vision. I don't have a clear vision yet, but I have hope. Uh, and I'm aware, like maybe being aware of my limitations helps that... Um, maybe that's a humility that uh, I'm not able in myself to do something, but I'm going to try. I'm going to uh, do it. You know, it's, it's always awkward when we try something new and then eventually like you, you learn it, you get better. And a lot of people stop at feeling awkward. Um, so that, that makes a case for just trying. You know, just doing it, even if it even if it's difficult and awkward. So, um, and doing it, just doing it without without getting too hard, um, or too consumed by it, obsessive about it. You know, which I guess goes into my own my own issues with uh, obsessing on things, over analyzing things, intellectualizing. These are things that I do. And, uh, I mean, I don't believe they're, they're totally bad. It's just my way of, uh, my way of weathering or buckling. Um, I, I don't, I don't believe that, that we are, that when our humanity shows us something, that those are flaws to be eradicated. You know, I think that these are, um, good qualities these are uh, these are things that can be uh, polished and used for for good um, rather than something to do away with but uh, yeah it's it's weaknesses I guess nonetheless and uh, there they are in my face And that happens with the artwork too, because I see that my uh, 
as I finish a book here, which, you know, this happens every time I finish a book. And when you start a book, there's this hope for trying something new and reaching a new level. But then when you finish a book, you see your, the inadequacies in it, you see the flaws in it. And that, um, you can doubt yourself like, well, I'm not that far along. And that is a sign that you can do better. You know, with the next book, you'll do even better. Um, the fact that you can see those flaws, uh, your, your, your sight, your perception is better than it used to be more knowledgeable. Um, but it's, yeah, it's a hard, um, that's a hard feeling too. when you're like, Oh, you know, it's not, uh, it's not as perfect. It's not as great as I would like it to be. Um, and you question its worth. And, uh, and that can happen too. If, if the book is not met with great success, um, that's something I've had to face before, um, where you, you hope a book is going to develop a strong readership, get picked up by a publisher something like that. Uh, people, you know, getting, getting good reviews and, and praise. And then if it's met with silence, uh, it's just, you know, it doesn't get picked up and so on. Uh, then it's like, oh, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm not, as, I'm not doing so well. It's not that good. And then, uh, well, that, that's that's a downer. Um, and that you know, I foresee that happening with this book. You know, it's it could get picked up by a publisher. It could develop a large uh, readership. But you know, I'm at I'm at the point where I've just embraced that my work's going to be is likely to be. indie and kind of unknown like not well known not um not highly praised necessarily or like that successful in 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 a book market or something it's something that's that's unique and indie and and i've just kind of embraced that but i have hope that someday i'm going to cross some invisible line at some point my work will be will have certain qualities that have are more polished it'll reach a certain level where it's going to receive more praise. It's going to, it's going to develop, it's going to, or it slowly builds towards a, a greater readership, especially as I stick with this book over time. Um, then the readership could grow and grow. And so I still have that hope that, that eventually um, I'm going to have a reasonable readership, a reasonable, um, you know, and, 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 pe- and praise and people liking my work. Um, and I don't mean to diminish the successes I've already had. I get I, there's people that give me great feedback and and praise for my work and, and really and tell me they really enjoy my work. But it's not the same as uh, having thousands of readers and, and lots of praise from uh, from the, the established uh, comic book um, publishers and and so on. So. Um, Yeah, so I've kind of, I just embraced that. I just see that that's, that's going to be the case. Um, and it's, you know, I'm not trying to lack hope. It's, I still believe that, that it'll, that it can work out um, to me having greater success in the market and with, uh, in people's eyes or critics' eyes. But uh, it's, it's a process and, and I can't control when that happens. It might be an invisible line I cross. It might be a slow build. I can't control that. You know, I decided a while ago that even though I didn't get published and get met with great success after my first book, my first comic, my first graphic novel, my second, my third, like even after that, uh, I decided early on, you know, I'm going to do this. I love doing this. If I stick with it, um, I'm going to get better and better at it. Uh, it, it brings me joy. I have something to say. I, I, you know, I have a perspective. I have uh, stories I want to tell. Um, and for me, it wasn't like one story that was really on my heart or mind. And I just really had to tell it. It was just, I love telling stories and coming up with ideas for stories and I want to execute it and and share them with people. So, but yeah, I decided that, that I was going to do it regardless of if I made money doing it. Um, but of course I hope someday that I do make 
of some money doing it. Um, so some hope uh, and some uh, belief that that it can work out. You know, so, so hanging on to um, the possibilities for for success, but um, not motivated by that. Uh, motivated by sticking to um, to the process, to being the practice of my art and putting in the time, the work, the years. Um, and the other element to that that, that I find help, hopeful and helpful, sharing what I do. So um, it's not just the finished comic book that I have to share with people. It's my thoughts, my perspective, my techniques literally the the whole process I go through drawing a page which I share on this YouTube my yeah you know, just everything and then qualities I have that are just me uniquely my insights my personality my 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 compassion you know like whatever it is there are things I have to contribute uh and, and I want I want to engage in that too that like we have a limited amount of time here. Like, so, uh, and I have, I have a lot, I could contribute if I just do it. And the same with books. I have a lot of, a lot of comics and books and stories. I can, I can contribute if I'll do it. Um, so I want to engage with, with life here. And, uh, that, that zest for life, it, it drives me to, to make comics too, to make art to stick to this practice and, and never stop. Um, to have that passion too. Um, with passion, I can improve at a much faster rate than without it. And the work can be much better. So even if your goal is just to get better, uh, find your passion. So here's the page. It's almost finished. You'll see how I chose to do this thumbnail. I still have Sun in the middle. Uh, he's still surrounded. You know, that, that was kind of what I was going for with the thumbnails is this thought that he could be surrounded. But, but instead of just on left and right, I've got a panel beneath him too, fully surrounding him. Uh, and we have... Uh, the, the second panel here, the first in this row of three, sword, um, you can't see the bottom jaw, uh, the, the, the jaw of King Croc. You see, you see sword's body, you can see his leg, his hands. So you understand like where he's positioned in space now and where that water is above his head. I, I didn't capture the, the tunnel in this shot, right? That, that was lost from the angle I chose to go with. But I did capture more effectively the physical space and, and, and the distance to the water and the position of sword there. Um, so I've got uh, Croc growling right after that, Sun, his shock, and then uh, some reaction there from sword. And then a, the statement from sword, like where he's like, you're, you're dead, you know, I've defeated you. Uh, this is, this is an interesting, you know, not only was this a challenging script to execute in this page, but there's nuanced or, or somewhat interesting, um, storytelling involved. So, um, I haven't shown you yet, the reader, how King Croc is defeated, that his jaw is severed, that he's going to be dying. I haven't shown that yet. We just see what kind of looks like the defeat of Sword. And then Sword says, you are dead. I've defeated you. Um, and then on the next page, you're going to get the, the very next panel on the next page will be the reveal of how Croc is, you know, his jaw is severed and he's defeated. Um, so I, I chose to have Sword relish in his, his, his win 
uh, before we even get to see his win. Um, the easiest way to do it would have been to just, you know, just show it. I mean, even even this, like, I could have just had him uh, cut through Croc's jaw and then just, like, everyone see exactly what happened and just move on. But I wanted to create that moment where Sun is reacting in shock and concern um, and that moment where, where Sword... Uh, is is relishing in his success um almost as like a, a last breath a last you know hurrah because uh he's he's trapped he's uh weakened uh, he's getting he's going to be pushed towards the water um so i wanted to capture those those reactions and so that 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 was why you know this gets this gets stretched out and needs to be presented in a different way. Um, you don't want to miss those opportunities for more interesting storytelling um, by just focusing on just showing what needs to be shown um, to like the most basic. Um, so this is this is like trying to focus on storytelling, writing, and and the visual uh, communication uh, to the audience. So. Um, that's it for this week. I feel better getting some of that off my chest. Um, yeah, there's hope and uh, and good things ahead, and I and I see that. I'm excited. Be the practice of your art. Encourage others to do the same. Find others that are doing the same. And make make a book. Bring something to life, even if it's a few pages. See you next week.